All right, we're on this section looking at um, a prompt neutron's lifetime versus its generation time. Very key. We will find out that, that a neutron's lifetime starts once it's released. You can see that. But its generation time starts upon the fission event. So for a prompt neutron, all of this time between the absolute absolutely instantaneous moment the fission event occurred, a neutron could have been emitted all the way out to, well, just a fraction of a fraction of a second, but 10 to the minus 14th seconds. That is considered the release time. And all neutrons born within that period are essentially in the same generation. Then once it's released, we start its lifetime, right? And then it does two things. It commences to slowing down. It is colliding with the moderator and slowing down. And the time that it average takes, to, the average time that it takes to slow down is 10 to the minus 6 seconds. And we call this the slowing down length. The slowing down length. And then right here, after it slows down, it is said to be thermal. The neutron's thermalized. And then it's going to take a period of time and some length for it to get absorbed. We call that the thermal diffusion time, and the length is called the thermal diffusion length. So what we have is the neutron fission event, where the neutron uh, is, hasn't shown up yet. Here's the fission event. And then we have the neutron actually appearing. This was the release time. And we know for a prompt neutron, this is prompt, that that was less than 10 to the minus 14th seconds. Then we know that the neutron is going to start slowing down. It's going to lower energy level. We call this the slowing down length. And the time associated with it is the slowing down time. And on average, it's about 10 to the minus 6 seconds. And then it's going to continue on until it gets absorbed. Now it's fully thermalized right here. This is thermal, thermal neutron. And then it will continue on until it gets absorbed. This is called the thermal diffusion length. And this is absorption here. Absorption. Um, the sum of these two, thermal diffusion length, which actually is from here to here, the sum of these two lengths is called the migration length, m. So slowing down length plus the thermal diffusion length, and sometimes you'll just see thermal diffusion length with an L like that, with no subscript, is equal to m, which is migration length. And you could also say that the sum of the slowing down time and the thermal diffusion time, which is 10 to the minus fourth seconds, is the migration time. So you could add up all these times. 10 to the minus 14th is release, plus 10 to the minus 6th seconds is the slowing down time, plus 10 to the minus 4th is the thermal diffusion time. If you add those all up, well, you essentially get 10 to the minus 4th with some serious zeros after it. That right there is going to be called L star the prompt neutron generation time. Prompt neutron generation time. And it is equal to 10 to the minus fourth seconds. Prompt neutron generation time. So first of all, we need to be able to define a generation and the generation time. Generation time starts upon the fission event and goes to reabsorption. This is a generation. Generation. You got some K and A's on that page. You got one to find the neutron generation time. Now, if you were ever asked, what's the difference between generation and a lifetime? The prompt neutron's lifetime starts when it's released, just like your lifetime starts when you're released. This is your lifetime, neutron lifetime, from release to absorption. Generation time is from fission event to absorption. All right, very good.